happened here by... I'm Montanova. Y'all already know. I missed last week. I'm making it up. I missed, like, the last week. <laughs> I I'm know, crying. I I'm know. You commented here and I wasn't here and I was literally like going like crazy. All but right, right now well. we have Marth and PT always, you already know, Mono and Devin 3000 yeah. so, over on TNC. Yeah, and both of these players, you know, they are, they have, been, you know, Mono's a little bit newer to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody should know Devin, even if not as a player. He is uh, one of the most talented streamers out there, is basically the brains and muscle behind the HO3K stream. Let's see if he can bring that same kind of power to this game, because he's going to need it. Uh, Mono's a player who's been taking names lately, uh, traveled oh, all the way from yep. Japan to be here for school, <laughs> but nonetheless... But still traveling, still traveling. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a traveling player. But yeah, we have Mono, we've seen Mono a few times on the stream uh, before. I believe he went against Booty and had that really insane dimensional cape, uh, Marth Nair, that we just had a clip at some point. Absolutely crazy lead he has against uh, a lot of players here in New York City. But you know, we have different things that are going every sort at the moment. One of like, the Devin's just favorite characters go with, but I'm not sure he's gonna be able to make it back even with. Oh, yep, definitely will. Oh, countering off the stage and killing Charizard, aka Devin, because at his first talk is already gone. Yeah, and only about 85, 95% mm -hmm. done right now. And oh, this is one of those interesting matchups where I think Squirtle does pretty dang well in the matchup. But then you have to swap to like Ivysaur and Charizard, and all of a sudden, Mark's range, your speed are becoming a lot more of a liability. Oh, yeah, but, but it doesn't matter because here comes Devin 3000 absolutely destroying and making a little bit more of an even game for himself, even just with, with just basic almost solo Ivysaur. Yeah, and I think it's really cool. Both of the stocks we've seen so far off stage plays. Mm -hmm. Very nice calculated edge guards where it seems like the opponent couldn't do anything in the world to stop him. And that's the thing with Marth, you can really uh, take him off stage as much as long as you can, as far as you can. And he might be one able to come back with Dolphin's, uh, Dolphin's swords, I mean, coming so short uh, distance wise. So, if uh, Devin is able to kind of counteract on that and use that to his advantage, he has a really solid game for himself, but he has to really pick it back up with percentage wise because he is in dangerous levels, as you saw earlier with oh. Charizard. Oh! I cannot believe he didn't get the timber right there for the kill. But uh, now it's, yeah, Devin's forced to go oh, guard. Oh, reading the flip where the flare bits will end using up smash and taking that first, second stock off of Devin so easily, so precisely. Yeah, and that's one thing that when you're playing Martha's close to other sword characters, that position is mandatory. Look at the way that Mono is spacing himself, always making sure to be just at that tipper range, always be threatening it. Oh, he's not quite landing the tippers right now, but he's still getting solid damage, keeping Devin out. Squirtle's normally a character known for being able to get in, and that's just not the case right now. Exactly, and that, oh. Ooh. Sorry, the, I get hyped. The Whenever they stop moving, I get hyped. I'm like, oh my god, the patience? Like, what's going on here? Are they bringing each other? So the thing with Mars is, I was thinking about this every day, with stories in general, they use their sword as a kind of feeler to know, ex to gauge exactly how far your opponent is. If your sword does not hit, you're not close enough to do what you want to do. And that was, that down to was exactly what he needed to know that he's able, he's close enough to uh, do what he wants to do and possibly close out this first game for himself in a timely fashion. Oh yeah, and here's where the you know playing Marth might work a little bit against him. I can't believe he yeah, just didn't get hit. Uh, but he might be struggling to get the kill. Devin at 116 percent, but oh, he's going for another one of those crazy near edge guards, but it's not working out. That back throw should do it. We have one stock apiece. Mono without any range can clean up a stock with a nice clean temper. That's the question right now. There it is. Beautiful job catching the landing. And that's one thing in the matchup we saw. The juggles were so important. You know, not only would Devin be eating 60, 70% of stock because he couldn't get down, but at the very end right there, it doesn't matter what hitboxes you throw out. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this drop down counter from the ledge so many times, and people always get caught by it because you're trying to go to the ledge, and he typically blocks that entrance for you, and you're almost basically dead at that point. Yeah, and that was such a good frame trap mm -hmm. with the neutral air. And here's that flare blitz. The Look at that beautiful, yeah. absolute beautiful timing. And it's like worth noting, if we could go back to that clip for uh, just a moment. Yeah, so this one here. Uh, notice when he starts going, yeah, it was just on reaction. Mm -hmm. Like Devin, he couldn't even drop down to like, you know, just grab the ledge because Mono was still there waiting for him. I think maybe he was hoping he wouldn't land on the platform, but even then, Mono could still chase him down for a forward smash or something like that. So this is kind of just checkmate. And that's the thing that you, you that's like so apparent with these amazing players that they know exactly how far your your opponent's moves are. Not even just your own, but knowing how like your opponent's the spacing of your own opponent is so imperative because you get moments like that where you're able to really capitalize on 
the distance, the horizontal distance of charge our flare boots and capitalize on the end, on the landing right then and there and just uh, just do up smash right at the edge of the middle platform. So we're gonna run right back with Marth and Pokemon Trainer. We are banning uh, Smashville and Small Battle. We're going right back to TNC, if I recall correctly. This, yeah, it looks like that's here. going to be the case. I mean. I think I agree with it. Most of that game was very close. Yep. Just that Mono kind of pulled ahead by the end right there. I do think that the higher ceiling might be a little bit of a liability for Devin uh, because his Ivy Sword kills off. Well, maybe he won't be killing off the top quite as reliably. Yep. Uh, but nonetheless, he's been getting his kills off the side of the guard. So. Uh, but so is Mono, and right now, Devin is the one who needs to land. Find a way back down to the ground, trying to roll out of the corner. Finally gets that one opening, but doesn't actually get that much off of it. I know, completely agree with you. Like right now, Mono's having an amazing lead against Devin right now, ha having a great uh, sense of using like a ledge and just really trapping him with, with like the limited options he can do. He's like, basically taking away a lot of what Devin needs in order to have a win condition and not allowing him to have those. And uh, and really using Galama's conversion stuff on Mars in order to capitalize on this uh, this lead is a massive lead he has at the moment. It is a massive lead, but Devin is doing his absolute darkest not to get hit by the finishing blow. One thing against Marth, which you've already seen, Marth is the kind of character where you absolutely do not want to cross up right on the shield. Nope. Because back air out of shield is so powerful. And wait, like that, it's right behind him is where the tipper hitbox is. Exactly. And, and that tipper also is just a crazy mechanic that Marth it just has, and you have to be really, really, really weary of it. Because if you're just out of range, that tipper is just gonna get you and just do increased damage that you don't, you absolutely do not want. So now here we go, Devin using Squirtle, something that he does a little bit more rare for him to use. But Squirtle's great because he's small, he's uh, he's quick, and he did a got look a good amount of damage really quickly. And Ivy Sword, of course, a little bit of a middle character and a good balance between both Charizard and Squirtle. Yeah, admittedly, one of the normal advantages. Oh, you're oh, yeah, so you're not. Uh, never mind. Oh, and that's on the other side of the stage. We're not have uh, killed that's at that percentage, but it had that been any closer, even mid stage, I think that would have been it for Devin's uh, second stock. Yeah, Devin to a lot of rolling behind Mono. Uh, that's a liability, as we said before. Back air out of shield is such a good option for Marth. Uh, and I mean, rolling is so it's so tempting because shielding against Marth, oftentimes you won't get any type of value from it. Uh, yeah, he's been rolling out of the corner yeah. a lot there. I'm expecting by the end of this game, Mono is going to. Punish him dearly for doing that. Oh my god, this, it, it, we might be seeing a three stock situation here if uh, Devin's not able to lower the stock very quickly. We have Charizard, the big beefy guy of the of the three, and that almost killed off the ledge, and he, he, he might be able to. Yeah, no. Just gain the, taking your jump away after uh, when you're a Marth is so detrimental. Because Dolphin Sash is simply not going to carry the way that you, you want to come back to the stage. Yeah, okay. This is a very interesting neutral standpoint where both of them are at zero, and we just see that Mono is the first one to get these hits in, and he just does so much of them at these lower percents. Ivysaur gets a back air into nothing, whereas Mono gets all of this damage off the single forward tilt. Oh, this might be something looking very dangerous for Devin right now. He's getting, he's getting tied at that ledge, and he's that. Oh, there's no way. Yeah, we. We hadn't really seen the Tipper hitboxes oh, kill ridiculously the early. That uh, kills <laughs> there stupid early. Yeah, that is the that is the benefit to Marth over you know a character with more consistency mm -hmm. like Lucina. Lucina wouldn't be killing at 105 with opponent trapped in the corner Look at right that. there. That's evil. Yeah, <laughs> I I feel like a lot of those stocks were Devin in the corner hitting a button. Yeah, which I mean it's tempting. What else are you supposed to do in the corner besides do your darndest to get out of the corner? And it's like you got you have very, you have options like roll, and that's it. And that, that's all you can really do to get out of the corner, or even jump. But then Marth covers it with Nair or with uh, with a fair, and you have to deal with that in that moment. And it's not fun against someone yeah. like Mono, who's so and, proficient with this character anyway. And if we could actually go back to that stock right there, uh, the final one in particular, this is something that Mono had been doing a lot. Uh, you know, so he gets him off stage. He puts himself at this sort of, you know, he dashes back. This dash back is to cover a buffered roll. And then he goes for this, it's a full hop. Look at how many full hops he's going for. He's constantly jumping up at this exact range, uh, which, because the thing is, he, you know, we saw he's jumping up without hitting a button, and we saw that Devin liked to roll from the corner. If he rolls into the corner, that's a down air into a up smash yep. or like a forward smash or something. And if he stands here and throws out a move like he's doing, he's also just a sitting duck for that neutral air. In that situation, if Devin had recognized that, up B from Ivysaur might have actually been a really good anti-air option. Just to 
keep him out of that like full hop range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look how. Uh... <laughs> yeah, just like the pointing. He's like, <laughs> actually doing the pointing. Oh my god, like the. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Yo, get Ivysaur's face. Go to Ivysaur's face. Please. Let me see if Ivysaur's doing the other pog expression. Ah! That is the other pog expression. <laughs> Wait, there's literally him being like. Let's get a bit of a zoom out here. Uh, yeah, let's like that. That is pog, fun. dude. That's just pog. Give me my pen. No, I'm trying to write ah. Because <laughs> he's saying ah, please. Good eye, John. 